my name is uh, John O'Connell. I am currently Director of Strategic and Service Innovation at SCW. And uh, yeah, like it says in the title there, I've been uh, leading innovation uh, in search of bountiful interfights for quite some time. So we could go to the next slide, please. That's great. So <clears throat> um, I set sail um, <laughs> navigating what I'd class as kind of the high seas of health intelligence back in 2000s where I joined Imperial Hospital um, and looking at kind of pulling together, you know, hospital performance on balanced scorecards, but looking ordinarily into hospital mortality and how we could improve uh, uh, reduce mortality rates within hospital. And then moved across from, I suppose, a provider perspective into working at PCT and leading a, a health intelligence team across um, uh, West London, a household commissioning team. And again, looking at the challenge from a system perspective of health intelligence and how do we make a system more efficient? Same challenges we have today on population health management haven't kind of gone away. And I was lucky then enough to, to move into the private sector where I joined an organisation called Dr Foster. And we were looking around again deeply into uh, mortality, looking into you know what indicators matter to patients. And again, looking at the challenge of intelligence and information, how to share that with boards to, to bring improvement around. Uh, I then spent a number of years there, sort of seven or eight years, and then moved into a company called Capita. Had a very different approach to using health intelligence and data. We were looking at kind of getting the data quality right and, and improving the coding and making sure the data quality was really, really robust. So not an awful lot there. But both of those jobs working in Dr. Foster and Capita, although they were quite interesting, we were missing something. So it was kind of what, what else do we need to do? So I was lucky to obtain a, a great position working at a company, an organization called BMJ. A medical organization looking at best practice in medicine and best practice in evidence-based medicine and then taking that globally around the world but linking it to data so what does good look like and then what's the education from a clinician perspective so I was very lucky uh, to be able to sort of see amazing uh, systems healthcare systems across the, the globe and how they use both health intelligence data how they use clinical best practice and bringing and fusing those together so I'd be on that kind of journey globally, should we say, for, for many years now. And I'm kind of working now with uh, SCW and we're looking to sort of transform and change the way we use health intelligence data going forward. So what I want to do in this talk is just talk about what we're doing and why we see Python as being really key. If we could go to the next slide, please. Thanks. thanks. So what are we currently doing? Uh, I'll crack through these slides quite quickly. Uh, so apologies for that, but happy to pick up on anybody else afterwards. So we're using um, uh, AI for business on three domains. First one is what we call as cognitive automation, uh, something people refer to as RPA, robotic process automation. The second one we're using is what classing as cognitive insights, where we're linking different data together and using AI machine learning to start looking at patterns that we ordinarily couldn't see as, as humans ourselves. And the last one is something around optimization, cognitive engagement, where you can get systems linking together, dialing up, making an appointment, but equally are savvy enough to be able to say, I'm a bit frustrated because I'm speaking to a computer, put you through to a human being. So they are what we class as kind of the high impact changes that, that Python really plays a part in both the first one, automation, and on the second one in prediction. So really key areas. We can go to the next slide, please, Alex. Why are we doing this? Which is really important to sort of say why um, using Python and changing the way we work in the NHS is important. I thought we'd just talk about these three wicked problems, which are hopefully are no surprise to people on this call. The first one is looking at multi-morbidity. Um, it's the defining challenge, I think, of our healthcare systems. Healthcare delivery was built and generally remained centred on the treatment of one condition and not many. And I think the stats say that by 2035, I think in the UK, 70%, 17% of the UK population is projected to have four or more chronic conditions. So that's going to increase morbidity in the NHS, it's going to lengthen hospital probably admission and cause a readmission challenge. And it's going to be a big challenge to our organisations how we manage that effectively. The second one is then if you look at what makes us healthy, is a great report that's come out by the Health Foundation. And I was really surprised to think that, you know, to find out that only 10% of the population's health wellbeing is linked to access of care. And the rest of it is remaining is, is around kind of all those sort of social determinants of health. And the sad thing here is we only spend 7% of that uh, investment on healthy behaviours. So something clearly has to change because we can't continue where we're going. And then the final one was just what I class as kind of the ageing workforce uh, challenge. Um, and that got a ticking time bomb in that I think uh, one in five, 18 percent of our GPs in the UK over 55 are looking to retire in the next 12 months. 
coupled with that, if you look at a report that came out from the nursing observatory, I think 46% of nursing nurses in the next five years are coming up to retirement. So clearly we've got a, a workforce time bomb, but equally coupled with that, we've also got our own analytical workforce that needs to change and move there. So there are three big challenges, I think, that really help us as a, as a, as a leadership team kind of focus. If you go to the next one. So what I wanted to do here was just to say that the nature of workforce and the nature of the job that we do today is changing and changing rapidly. And what I was trying to say is as we move from descriptive analytics, moving towards diagnostic, predictive, predictive and prescriptive. You know, if you look at the kind of from a farming perspective and just put it into context that we plow the fields manually, uh, we then moved into using combine harvesters, which I would kind of say that the first thing for us from a, a data perspective is using the abacus. Then we've moved to Excel as kind of our combine harvester today. We use it for absolutely everything. But if we look towards the future of farming, they're going to be using drones and data to start spraying pesticides on fields and actually doing it from a grid reference and using data analytics to, to, to increase the yields of their farming. In, our, in the same instance, as we move towards prescriptive analytics, we're going to start using things like you know, R, like Python and like Java. So, you know, there's, a, there's great transformation underway. And I think as farming has transformed, I think health and care, the way the tools that we use today are going to transform in what we do. Go to the next slide, please. So I don't know if you guys have heard about the innovation, the innovators dilemma. Uh, and it kind of there's a, there's a great chap who sadly passed away a few years ago called Christian Claytonson, uh, and he wrote a paper around, you know, and it was basically why are great organisations uh, not great at sort of transforming into the future? So you couldn't understand why even the most outstanding companies lose, that do everything right still lose their market leadership or change. If you look at the likes of Kodak and, and big organisations, what, what, why did it, they suddenly their demise suddenly happen? And it's to do with what makes you great today doesn't guarantee success into the future. And this is my challenge to everybody on the, on the call today is that challenge and look at what you do today and can you do it differently? Because what we have today doesn't mean that we're going to be successful in the future. It takes a completely different mindset uh, to do things differently. Go to the next slide, Alex, please. And what he was trying to say here was, um, and I tried to sort of describe it from descriptive analytics into prescriptive analytics. Today, we're very much in the uh, sustaining innovations curve. We use Excel. It's uh, existing business technology, but it's only, only an incremental change that can take us so far. It's very focused on improving efficiencies. RPA and robotics moves into that kind of second phase of what you call efficiency innovations, uh, using the likes of you know, Blue Prism, UiPath, and Python plays a part in that. And But then if you look about really shifting the dial, and, and what I mean by that is responding to those workforce challenges, that multi-mobility challenge that we've got, We've got to do things differently and that moves into prescriptive and predictive analytics and to do that we need to be using obviously ai uh, and advanced analytics but we need to be using new tools and that's where the likes of python and r and java come into play so it's just a question of just trying to frame why we need to invest in those new technologies we go into the next slide um so it it, it calls to a, 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 I suppose a challenge of innovation and then innovation from our perspective at SCW requires identifying problems that matter to our systems, moving through them what we class as systematically. So there is a system to, to innovate and delivering elegant solutions, not making things more complex, but ideally making things much more simpler. But the biggest issues that we've had is kind of knowing where to start is important as knowing how to innovate, um, tackling the hardest problems first. You know, we know we've got massive problems with elective recovery. We know we've got massive problems around delayed discharges. So tackling some of those first. And refusing incomplete answers and also assumptions people say things can't be done but just challenging them back and anything that we do as, as an nhs isn't there you know you can't really call it a true innovation unless it's been adopted and in, in the market so that's kind of some of the sort of uh, the mandate that we have from an innovation perspective of trying to a call to arms and then if you go to the next slide please Alex. i thought i'd just draw this out quickly on, on the on the on the presentation one of the biggest challenges we have in our organisation is what I class as kind of the people challenge because innovation doesn't fail necessarily because of uh, organisations or companies have a, a lack of process. It tends to fail because we're all human. Uh, we have fears, we have biases and we have emotions as, as all humans do. So just to be cognizant, and I can't underestimate that even if you're doing any programme or any innovation or application used in Python, you know, you are looking for people to change and do things differently. So don't underestimate the amount of engagement that you need. Um, you know, these are huge challenges that we're going to come across. And what I would just say to people is, you, you know, when you're trying to innovate, you'll, you'll fall seven times, but you have to make sure you get up that eighth time. It's about resilience, about doing things differently across systems. 
if we go on to the last few slides, next slide, Paul, Alex. Yeah, why Python? So I put on this one here. I, I believe that kind of the data analytics worlds have collided, um, you know, between uh, analytics, BI, and uh, data science as well. And they say that by 2023, 20, 24, 40% of, of professional workers who are you guys on the call will start to orchestrate their own business environments as they do with their music and streaming. So you'll be starting to move assets around. And Python is going to be one of those tools that will help you link those things together, help you unlock data and provide new insights and ideally drive new impact as well. So the critical over, overlapping capabilities between you know, analytics, business intelligence and data science have come together. And I think Python is that perfect tool in that space that helps to do that. If we go to the next slide, please. So I just wanted to say that why I myself think you know, from a leadership perspective, it's really important for us to, to invest in, in Python and, and develop our workforce is that it's an incredibly efficient language. It's simple, it's flexible, it's easy to learn and maintain. It is general purpose, you know, it supports web applications, and automated scripts, as I mentioned on those three things that we're focusing on. Also graphical interface it links into, but probably most exciting for a lot of people on this call, it, it helps support that future analytics data science and the insights that we're trying to, to, to draw out. And these were just some of the things that I put on there as a you know, thing for me from a leadership perspective, why it's so important for us to develop. And there's there's many, many more I can go into, but it's an incredibly accessible language. There's an amazing community out there, people, uh, and I talk about the Python community, do a shout out for those guys, but it's a great community of coming together. If you've got problems and people are sharing their scripts and, and helping each other learn. So I'll kind of sign off there and, and take some questions. So a couple of minutes to go there, it's probably all right on time. Uh, thank you, John. So we have a question in a chat that says, which RPA system is John referring to? Is it open source or is it paid for? Um, it's a blend, a good question. It's a blend. We don't try and uh, pin our, our, our kind of, uh, we try to be agnostic. So when we're talking about RPA, we try and look to set up a center of excellence using a suite. So it, cloud-based obviously, but we will use what we're trying to do is trying to work at the moment with NHS and with Ragu and the team um, to be able to, the scripts being written, have a central library of those scripts that people can use so that will become open source, but equally we'll be using Blue Prism uh, uh, as a UI path and or others. So we try to be as, 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 as agnostic as possible, but yeah, share those scripts and be open, as open source as possible because we want to build once and share many because that's really where the key value is. I think at the moment a lot of systems are, are tied to either one, you know, Blue Prism Cloud or UI Path. We want to try and break those boundaries down and, and be as open as, as we can. A great question. Uh, 